Hey everyone, welcome back to Crown Corner, the channel where we dive into the wild world of entitled people and their unbelievable stories. Hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's go. I have no damn idea if this belongs here or not. I just have no effing idea where to post this, and I am so helpless. Before we begin, I'm a child to a mother of three, and we moved in with a man and his child. I'm the oldest of all childs. I love the man we moved in with as a dad. Let's call him Tom and his son Paul. So at first, Paul seemed like a decent guy. Everything was chill, played games together and stuff. From time to time, he revealed his true self to as he got comfy. It started with simple, entitled behavior. Not washing dishes, crying for stupid things, and being petty. Nothing too bad. Unsympathetic, though. With time, it got worse. Way worse. The more we all hung out as a family, the more it came to light that Tom is an absolute marionette of Paul. We assume it's because of both their history. Tom has childhood trauma, and Paul kind of has too, because his mom is a diagnosed narcissistic and psychopath, so she left Paul alone. Tom and Paul's mom fought against each other for custody, in which period Paul was in an orphanage. Paul was too young to remember, though. Unrelated side note, Paul's mom tried to stab Tom to death, just so you'll understand how bad it was. And because of all of that, we assume that Tom just tries to make Paul's childhood as great as it can get and is blinded by his pity for Paul. After just being petty, Paul began to do worse things. He screamed all night because of Call of Duty, started to throw his food all over the table if he didn't get what he wanted and hit and kick Tom just for not buying the food he wanted. Paul started playing sick to not go to school and screamed even more in the night hours. We had hopes that this would only be a phase. After Paul hitting Tom got more frequent, we looked for therapy for Paul. Every single attempt to get him out of the house failed. When someone's watching, he seems to be the kindest person ever who'd never hurt a fly. At some point, a cat of ours died, shortly after we discovered that he's hitting our animal. We had no proof, though. We only heard sounds and saw him near an animal that sat in the corner looking like it had seen death itself. When Paul hit my mother once, I had enough. I admit he's not strong enough to do something serious, but it is about the principle. I started to look for faults on Paul's side. One day, I catch him on video. He hit a cat with a broom on the vid. That was today, and I immediately showed that video to my mum and to Tom. Tom still doesn't believe me. He's now searching for mistakes I made to justify Paul's deeds. I don't know what to think of everyone now. I love Tom as a dad, but not doing anything is just not justifiable. Also, my mom always says it's going to get better, but never does something. I'm genuinely scared that Paul will do something to my siblings, and I'm still too young to make an impact. I just don't know what to do. I'm so sorry if this is all over the place. English isn't my mother language, and I am literally shaking while writing this. I also could understand if you'll believe this is fake. Let me start by setting up the cast. All fake names, because privacy through obscurity, and I didn't get the bastard's names. Me, Blue. Almost three years of working at the store. In my late teens, duty manager. Allison, Ali for short. Worked at the store for somewhere between five, ten years. In her forties or fifties, but still polite. Other store staff member, Elaine. Pretty new, don't think she'd been here a year yet. Work Saturday night and recognize the kids. Looks to be a year or two younger than me. Annoying kids. Alex and Freddie, collectively Lil Craps. No older than twelve each. Store greeter relieving me. Oleana, also pretty new. And rolling cameras. A few may recall my post here a few weeks ago about all the cups I keep finding around my store. I mentioned that I've almost been working here for three years. In that time, I've had no direct encounters with an annoying customer. That streak ended yesterday afternoon. My shift was supposed to be 2.30 to 6 on the shop floor. It ended up being 2.30 to 5.30 a store greeter, then 5.30 to 6 on the floor after our scheduled store greeter didn't arrive. Most of the shift was all right. Customers came and went, all was well. Then, the Lil Crafts arrived after five. I didn't notice them, but Elaine, who happened to be asking me about something unrelated, irrelevant, don't bug me over it. When she spied them walk in and swerve over into kids' apparel, 
If you know the store, you know the store, without even saying hi to me. How rude. She was quick to fill me in. They'd been booted on Saturday night because the guy busted shoplifting. Thought they were slick coming back on a night with a different greeter who wouldn't recognize him. Oh, how I laughed. Elaine quickly gets Allison's attention, and about ten seconds later, Allison, over PA, can we have security to kids, please? Now, at our store at least, this is a scare tactic to make shoplifters think twice before they go ahead. If you keep it up, we'll eventually call the security office and nearby security guard, have them tail you, and if they reckon you're planning theft, they'll give you the boot. Anyways, Ollie calls for security to different areas as the little craps float around. Meanwhile, Allison has lain spying on another customer she suspects to be a shoplifter. She ended up being all clean. Eventually, while she's floating up the back, looking down the laneway at me, the twerps skulk right behind her. I advise her over the two-way to turn around, but by the time she did, they disappeared into sporting. She perches up the front, and we just watch them crossing between the kids and home sides, snaking up and down. At one point, I saw them tossing handballs into the air and catching them. Hope they didn't pay for them. Kind of wanted to make them crap their pants when they walked out if they didn't after the PA calls. They continue weaving. At one point while crossing that same spot I mentioned above, they had the balls to wave at Ollie and I. And the next time, she beckons for them to come closer to us. To my surprise, they did, but tried to walk out the opposite side to where we were standing. They got blocked, and we told them not to bother returning because they were just a nuisance. Asked them if they paid for their handballs. Surprisingly, they'd put them back. They emptied their pockets to prove it, without me asking. And yep, all they had were their phones. With a raised eyebrow, I let them pass. As they walked off into the mall outside our shop, Alex turns around and pulls double birdies at us. I just turn around, jaw hanging. Me. Did you see that? Ali. Yep, I roll. Eventually, Alana shows up. I fill her in and go about with what I should have been doing three hours ago. We get a spill in cosmetics, which Ali heads off to clean, and then Alana calls over the two-way that they're back. Ali asks me to go drive them away again. Speedwalking, I storm back to the front, telling them they have a lot of nerve returning to a shop they've been soft banned from. No official trespass notice yet, so no cops called and tell them to leave before we take further action. Freddy actually uses his brain and leaves, but Alex runs off into kitchen. Oh no, he didn't. I continue pursuing him, maintaining my previous pace, eventually finding him hiding in an aisle in Manchester. Found you, I called, only for him to bolt back to the door, the aisles are double-ended, and find sanctuary in the arcade with Freddy. Of course, I warn them about what's going to happen next time, trespass notice, and they just sit at a table, giggling to themselves. You think I just, when it comes to dealing with idiots like you, we never just. I remember wanting to storm out there and punch their heads in, followed by thinking, restrain yourself blue, you're in your uniform, you're in your workplace, you're on the clock, you don't want to risk your job, or any future job, or a black mark on your white record. They were gone when I left at six. Update. I was back in at work on Saturday during the day and quickly ran into Ali the duty manager. Asked her if she'd heard much more about Alex and Freddy, the Lil Craps. She hadn't. I was just like they're going to be back, I'd bet any money. Famous last word. Not even ten minutes later, I was out on the shop floor, heading over to the service counter looking for customers who may need help on my way there, when I spied an all-too-familiar black shirt in cosmetic. It didn't register initially, so I kept walking, before it does finally register. I step back, my head snapping in his direction. Nope, he's gone. I keep walking, finish my start, a shift routine, let checkouts and service desk know which side of the store I'm on, write the number for my store phone down for the desk, then check how full the returns pile is. And as I'm heading past the service desk, there they are. The Lil Craps. And they've got lady friends with them this time. Not their mothers. Two young girls about the same age. Our eyes cross. Cue ensuing conversation. Freddy. Oh, hello, Blue. Me, through gritted teeth. Hello again, boys. What brings you back here? Alex. Just shopping, you know? Me. Sure. But your logic makes no sense. 
You get busted attempting to shoplift, get the boot, get told not to bother coming back. Then you come back the next night, likely planning the same thing. You get booted twice more and now you're back again? They just ignore me and disappear. I'm straight on the two-way radio alerting Ali to their presence. She finds them, tells them they aren't improving their reputation, before asking the girls if they're aware of the Lil Crap's attempts at shoplifting. Apparently they were... So of course they get warned that if the boys keep shoplifting and they just do nothing, then they could potentially land themselves in trouble as well. After all, if they associate with the boys and then don't do anything to stop them, should they attempt to shoplift? They do open themselves to the potential to be charged with accessory to shoplifting. They left not long after. They did return with a group twice as big and cross me again. They asked me if I was homosexual. I didn't reply, not wanting to give them that satisfaction. Before anyone asks here, though, I am straighter than a ruler, and of course warned Ali they were trying to be annoying again. They were lucky they left again. Later, I was chatting to the store greeter, call him Pete, warning him about the Lil Craps, and apparently Elaine wasn't the first to spot them last Saturday. He was there in the morning when one of the other managers gave them the boot. Apparently they're regulars, so of course they get teased when they show up to stir crap. My former boss is the worst human being I've ever met. He did all sorts of things to mess with anyone he didn't like. So a while ago, I was at a family event in a local park, walking with a young boy from our family who is developmentally disabled with Down syndrome, Ben. Ben does fairly well, all things considered, but he's always been sensitive to anyone making fun of the way he looks or his condition. We were just having a good time on our little stroll, Ben and I both enjoying the day. Along comes my boss walking toward us. I'll call him Rob. I cringe at seeing him but smile and say hello to play nice. Rob. There's something you don't see every day. A pair of ugly R-word walking together. Ben bursts into tears as Rob laughs and walks off. I deal with Ben and ignore Rob. I'm super pissed and trying to calm Ben down because for a few minutes he was totally distraught. Finally, I get Ben to focus on how he has me and a lot of other awesome friends and family and that Rob is a stranger and what he thinks doesn't matter. We walk some more and I saw that Rob was at the park with his wife and teen daughter having a cookout and he had apparently been on his way back to his family from a trip to the toilet when he saw us. Back to being super pissed. I went back to our gathering and talked to an adult cousin of mine, Jake, telling him what happened. Jake wanted to get revenge on Rob, but I reminded him that this was my boss. I didn't want Rob to be able to know the revenge had anything to do with me because then he'd make my work life even worse than he already had. So Jake asked me for anything I knew about Rob that might help. I told Jake a bunch of things about Rob, but the relevant info here is that Rob liked to drink a particular kind of locally made beer at a certain bar. Rob had talked of having drank there on the previous Friday night while his wife and daughter were away visiting her family. Also, Rob had recently told a story at work about his wife's obsession with a particular little green fictional character. Let's call it Yabi Boda. Turns out his wife kept a stuffed Yabi Boda on their bed at all times. I wasn't there for the revenge setup itself because I didn't want Rob to see me, but Jake filled in the details afterward. It was basically this. Jake approached Rob and put an arm around his shoulders and tried to kiss him. Rob pushes him off. Rob, what are you doing? Rob's family is now paying attention. Jake, I am just so excited to see you, sweetie. Friday night was so amazing. Rob, what are you talking about? Jake. Seriously, you're going to act like you don't remember now. I know you were a bit tipsy after all of those specific local beers at the local bar, but certainly you remember what happened later. Rob, nothing happened later, or ever. I don't even know your name. Jake, really? You were screaming on Friday? Rob, turning red. You lying son of A.E. Rob's wife, interrupting. Listen. I don't know who you are, but this is my husband. I'm sure you have him mistaken for someone else. Please, just leave us alone. Jake. Oh no, I'm not mistaken. We had the best night ever on Friday, and now he's acting like he doesn't even know me. Rob's wife. I told you. This is my husband. You're mistaken. Jake. Oh, maybe I am. I guess it was someone else who took me back to his place on Rob Street.
and had great night with me on the bed right next to Yabi Boda. Sorry. Jake turns and walks away. Rob's wife. Oh my God, Rob, what the F is wrong with you? You're gay now, really? Already long story made a bit shorter. Rob's wife wasn't real happy with him anyway, and this was apparently the tipping point that made her file for divorce soon thereafter. Rob frequently complained at work in the following months about how he didn't care about his wife but really missed his daughter and how much it sucked to live in his new place compared to his old home. Every time he complained about his lack of a home life at work, I knew he did it to himself when he was mean to a developmentally disabled kid. The best part is he never figured out I was involved at all. For context, I work at a theme park which is opening up a new attraction area at the end of May. Employees and family get to experience prior to the public opening. This was the day I went with my mom. My husband and kid were meeting us later. My mom and I are in line to her favorite ride. We were telling each other how excited we were to experience the new area of the park. For context, the tickets give you a few hours exploring this area at a designated time, but you can enjoy the park earlier in the day. Well, an entitled mom and her demonic brat hear us. You are getting into the new attraction, Karen asks us. Mm. Yes. I want to go to mommy. He repeats this mantra several times in a high-pitched voice, dripping with entitlement. Kid looked to be ten, I tell him. It is only for the employees. You will take my baby to it. That is final. Ma'am, it is for employees and their families only. Please leave us alone, Mom tells her. How dare you use that tone with me, you old hag? Karen yells at Mom, and then her son gets into a full tantrum mode and keeps shouting, Make them take me, Mommy! I want to go, too. I then tell Karen, do not talk to my mother like that. She goes into a full Karen mode. You will do as I say or I will complain about the way you are treating us to your manager. You do not know my name or where I work, witch. Leave us alone. How rude you are. Your mother raised a witch. Mom sighs and tells her I've had enough of your rudeness. At this point, we try to just leave the line. My purse was attached to my left shoulder, resting at my right hip. Karen then grabs my purse and tries to snag it away. I stop and demand she let go. We started a tug of war with my purse, as she yells and screams for me to give her the tickets for the new attraction. Someone called an employee over from the line. What is going on? The employee asked. Karen, of course, rushes to be the first to talk. This witch stole my purse and the tickets of my son and I for the new attraction. That is not true. She is the one trying to steal my purse. The kid goes back to his mantra. I want to go to the new attraction, Mommy. Make them take me. Mom tells the employee my daughter is telling the truth. While Karen is still yelling, give me my purse. The employee then informs us that they called security and that they will deal with this. Because of that witch, we were taken basically to an area to get maps, information, etc. It was not just a security officer, but a law enforcement officer dealing with this issue. Karen does not seem so confident now. She just keeps demanding my purse. The security took my purse. Her brat just kept whining and crying like an entitled brat, demanding to go to the new attraction. We are in a small room, and Cop opens the purse. I thankfully had my ID for work and my driver's license in my purse. I also opened the pin on my cell phone and showed him my reservation for this new attraction, which proved the purse and tickets were mine. Karen then goes ballistic and tries to attack me while screaming like a rabid-filled animal. Cop reached over and grabbed her shirt, forcing her to stop. Her shirt rips a little, and she gets into an epic meltdown as we all stare at her in disbelief. Assault. These people want to assault me. Help. Calm down, ma'am. Nobody is trying to want to assault me. Help. The officer then says, everyone, besides Karen, please leave. Security pulled the crying kid out while I picked up my things from the table and left. My mom and I are sent into another room to write a report and to be questioned. I was also interviewed by security about my role in this if I had any responsibility. It took two hours to do all the paperwork and interviews. As for Corinne, she had a meltdown like two-year-old. She had to be tased several times. She was also arrested and banished from the park. Her kid was with the security guards as he was crying and kept calling for his mom. Finally, he was taken to a nearby police station with his crazy mom. The following day, I worked and the same security guard was checking IDs for employees and told me about what happened. 
we ended up being late for our time in the new attraction. We lost 15 minutes thanks to that psycho lady. I have never experienced anything like this before. Her kid acted three instead of ten, and Karen herself was just insane. Mom and I had fun, though. But it was really terrifying that people like Karen exist. She was charged with assaulting an officer and some other things. I would rather forget this ever happened. I'm still shocked that a supposedly grown woman can be this entitled. Enjoying the stories yet? If you do, please subscribe, like, and comment. This happened a few years ago. I moved northwest from the Bible Belt of the South three years ago, and my truck is a one GMC Southern Comfort. This truck originally belonged to my father, but when he passed, he left it to me. I... 27-year-old female, had to fix many issues with it from lifter tick front rack leaking, exhaust fell off, and even the broken fuel pump. I fixed it up the way he wanted and took a nice road trip getting it up here. I moved to an area with an influx of individuals from California, and Karen is one of the few that are nuts. She complained to the front desk of the apartment complex for anything and everything. She once yelled at random people in the parking lot because she wanted an eco-friendly environment and demanded we all sell our gas vehicles for Teslas. When we said we can't afford them, she screamed at more people about how she could afford hers. I don't drive the truck very often because Dad wanted to keep the mileage low and it's a 2WD Lowrider, so it's a Sunday driver. It's been over two years since this happened. It was late summer, and I decided I'll take it to the car wash to clean it up a bit. Now, this truck is loud, but not obnoxious. Everyone who has owned a V8 knows a cold start in the morning can be loud, and the Flowmaster outlaw under it doesn't help. She came out banshee screaming at me that I need to tone it down. People were sleeping. It was 9 a.m. I apologized and said, I haven't cranked it in over a week. It's going to be a little loud. It's a 5.3 liter V88. She looked at it more and smiled and asked, Can my son have it? Me? What? No, why would you ask that? Well, my son is in high school and would absolutely love it, plus you have multiple vehicles and you don't need more than one. Absolutely not. This truck belonged to my dad and is not for sale. If you don't give it to me, I'll tell the front desk to you. Go ahead. And then I drove off. I later got a call from the front desk that she complained and to meet them there. Me. Hello, manager. How can I help you? Manager. Hey, Karen here is complaining your truck is too loud. Do you have the copy of the exhaust paperwork? Yeah, I'll go get it. I grabbed it out of my center console and handed it to the manager. You see, Karen, her truck is within the legal noise ordinance limit, and even then, it's not that loud. I'm sorry, Karen. You feel my truck is too loud, but it's within the legal limit, and I don't drive it every day. Karen stormed off, slamming the manager's door. I shrugged my shoulders. I don't know what her problem is, but she tried to ask me to give her the truck earlier. Weird. A few days passed and it was nice, but as I was going to go put gas in my truck, Karen once again asked for it for her son. I said no. She threatened that she would call the police on me. I said go ahead and waited by my truck for them. They came and said they got a report of a soul and vehicle. They separated us and I told them everything. Officer, so Karen has been harassing you and demanded the truck. She claimed you took the keys from her son and pushed him. Me. Yes, officer. Here are the registrations from the last several years, including the ones with my dad's name on them. If you follow me, I'll get the title that is in my name and his death certificate. We got the papers from my lockbox. Officers reviewed them together and told Karen, I am filing a false report is serious. Karen, but she stole my son's truck. No, you falsely called us and harassed her. Karen shoved the officers trying to run between them and was arrested for assaulting a police officer. Karen was evicted for throwing rocks at gas trucks in the parking lot a few months later and encouraging her two teen sons to jump in the beds of the trucks. She claimed they were free-range kids, yes, like chickens, and thus were above the law. She wasn't very pleasant as a neighbor. Good riddance. I honestly can't believe that this just happened, but here we go. I was online shopping this morning when I saw these gorgeous outdoor Christmas lights at really great prices at a local store. My mother loves Christmas, but she's never had the money or time to put any lights up, but she longed to have some. I decided that, as an early Christmas present, that I would get her some that she could be proud of. 
I purchased some great deals online, like some light-up reindeer, her favorite, some colorful string lights with the colors red, green, white, blue, and purple, a snowflake-shaped light, and some light-up candy canes for her candy cane lane. I ordered them, paid with my credit card, and was actually able to pick them up in the store the same day. All for less than $100, a total steal. When I got there, I saw there's a long line at customer services, so I decided to browse for a bit. I ended up getting a super great deal on a pair of dripping icicle lights, the buy one, get one free deal. I then added a strand of light-up garland so she could decorate inside with more than just the tree. I know it's a lot, but I made good money from doing remote lab work at my university, and since I had more than enough saved up for tuition, decided to spoil my family after such a rotten year. What I got from my siblings, dad and grandparents are not related to this event. So I go pay, and sure enough, the line at customer service is a lot shorter. I get in line, wait maybe 20 minutes, and when I'm at the counter, I present my email proving proof of purchase. But it takes a bit for her to scan the QR code as the device is apparently not reading it. I had no problem with that, because hey, things happen when suddenly my own cart is slammed into my side. See, what I did was put myself between my cart and the exit. I've read one too many horror stories of people just running off with others' purchases that I wanted to play it safe. And it kind of worked. Except for the fact that I'm now in a lot of pain because my own cart was rammed right into my hip bone and knee, knocking me over to the floor and nearly making me whack my head. And the crazy lady who did that then tried to push my own cart over me, all while screaming, I kid you not, you stupid little thief. This lady was literally trying to sell that I stole her cart. Needless to say, I'm super pissed and super in pain. Security is called. I'm screaming at the lady to stop lying and give me back my cart, and then I end up detained. Why? Beats me. Angry, I then twisted out of the security guy's hold, ripped the receipt out of my pocket, and shoved it in his face. I have the receipt, you witch. He startled, steps back and stares at the receipt, and I snap at him that he needs to get a pair of glasses, because whatever he thought, I have the receipt. That witch doesn't. Now, call me an ambulance because I can't take the bus home from how in pain my body was from being rammed by my own cart. An older security guard, a manager, and the head honcho supervisor come over, and the older guard starts berating the younger guy for dumping to conclusions again, apparently. The manager checks my receipt, and sure enough, it's all mine. And the crazy lady has no receipt. Of course, then the lady starts wailing about how I must have stolen her receipt, only to have it pointed out that I had used my points card for that store, which was on the receipt, and they could match to my ID. They also had CCTV of me with all my items, buying them, and then her coming along and grabbing them and ramming me with my own cart. I then have to sit there on a bench with all my items, the customer service girl who struggled to get the QR code to scan return my phone to me. I dropped it on the counter when I was hit and started placing my items I had bought online into the cart, which had now been returned to me, while Crazy Lady was detained. Police and EMT has arrived not long after. Store actually wasn't that far from a hospital or police station, and after the EMTs loaded me onto the stretcher, my ankle was badly twisted from being knocked over, and I wanted to go to the hospital just to be safe. I give my statement, press charges, before turning to the supervisor as he comes over. He's very apologetic and asks if I want anything from the store for free as compensation for this disaster. I told him that all I wanted was for a the idiot security guard to either be rigorously retrained in thinking for once or be fired. B. That I wanted them to hold on to my purchases until I could come back to pick them up and C. That that crazy lady who is now screaming, you'll hear from my son. He's a lawyer, which is how I know she's an entitled mother. Be perma, banned from their entire chain because who knows if she's gotten away with it before or would do it again. The super agreed that it was more than fair. The security guy who detained me improperly looked horrified, and apparently a crazy lady heard that and went deathly pale before she fainted right then and there. I'm now sitting in a hospital bed, my ankle in a cast, the bones cracked, my left hip and knee in pain, my right elbow bruised, and having to call my grandparents to pick me up because my family only has two cars and my sister and dad are both at work. Hence, why I took the bus? What happened to me isn't right and I'm going to be pressing charges. And I'm in Canada, so I can't make her pay my medical bill as it's covered by the provincial plan. 
So over the weekend, my mom and her husband decided to pack everything up and move halfway across the country with everything they had bungee corded into the back of their pickup, with barely any money to work with on their way near where we live. They called me, 31 male, an hour away asking to stay without warning. I said yes, since it was late and they had no money for a hotel room, and were waiting for Monday for the pawn shops to open so my mom could pawn her ring and whatever else they could, to make it the rest of the way. My GF-37 female had to take my mom's husband to the hospital at midnight since he couldn't find his asthma medicine since they packed everything every which way on the truck, and she had to go pick him up two hours later after being released. On Sunday, he asked me if they could stay for two weeks without my Jeff around what I found to be very rude and underhanded of him. I told him he needs to talk to her, because it isn't my decision to make. After discussing it with her, she had to talk to her mom about it. She owns the house we live in and pay her rent. She said they had to leave by the time the pawn shops close on Monday, since they didn't call beforehand to set it up to stay any longer than that. Before anyone asks, they offer to pay $300 and get $100 in groceries with money they don't have. He doesn't start his new job until two weeks from now. This isn't the first time they have done this with me for the last six years while bouncing between states and jobs with no funds to work with. When they were told this, the mood shifted and the gaslighting started. Mom said, fine, we won't be a burden on you and refuse to eat. She does this when she is upset. Her husband had proceeded to ask if he could talk to my GF's mom and try to convince her. Monday comes around, and while my GF is at work, he calls her and starts going off on her, saying she probably didn't even try convincing her mom in the first place, and again stated if he tried talking to her, he could try convincing her. He did all this screaming over the phone around her co-workers, throwing the fact that when we went to visit them last year, they could have been kicked out of the hotel room they were staying in long term. Ever since we lost the apartment in 2017, that has been a constant thing for them. When they offered to have us stay so we didn't have to worry about expenses of a hotel room for ourselves, we were going to a convention in the same city they were in. I came home to see they were gone. Tuesday gets here and on my way home from work, I get a phone call from an unknown number but I knew who it was. T.H. Toxic Husband Me. Well, me, obviously. This is roughly how the conversation went. Me? Hello? T.H. Hey, you know who this is, right? Me. Yeah, I know who this is. T.H. Your mother doesn't know I'm calling you. Do you think there's any way you can convince her mom to let us stay there? Because we already pawned what we could, and we won't have enough money to keep the hotel room another night. Me. I already told you it isn't my decision. If she said no, then it is no. T.H. Well, we won't have anywhere to stay, and your mother will end up sleeping in the truck. Me. Thinking in my head. Yeah, and I've slept in an abandoned cemetery in the middle of December in a tent to get away from you. I'm sorry, D.H., but I can't make the final call. It isn't my decision to make. T.H. Has your mother ever abandoned you? No. Has she always been there for you? Yes. So, the least you could do is let her stay there. Me. I'm sorry, but again, it isn't my decision. And I don't appreciate you going off on my GF like a scalded dog. You had no right doing that to her. TH. I'll go off on whoever I want, and I don't care if you like it or not. I can do whatever I want regardless, if it makes you mad. Me. Thinking in my head, yes, you can. But it doesn't mean you're absolved of the repercussions of your actions. All right, if you don't care. Click. I haven't heard from either of them since. This has been a routine thing with them, and I'm exhausted from dealing with this and his BS for the last 12 years. He has been more or less out of my life the last six years, and I refuse to deal with it anymore. If it comes down to it, I will cut both of them out. Complete scorched earth. I shouldn't have to deal with his drama, toxicity, or gaslighting. His failure to take care of himself and her is not my priority. I'm sorry this is very long and drawn out, but it is my first time posting anything like this on here, and I really needed to get it out. I hope Hugo's owner gets to see this. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and don't let anyone toxic or entitled control your life or guilt trip you. Way back when I was in high school, my school had eight 50-minute periods a day. One period was lunch, and it lasted the entire 50 minutes. I was a really studious kid. Think Hermione Granger. I wanted to take an extra class, but it wouldn't fit into my full schedule. I got my parents' permission to take an eighth class, but I wouldn't have lunch. I would chug Diet Coke and inhale a candy bar between classes for my lunch. 
I didn't have a lunch period for either my junior or senior year. I participated in a lot of activity in clubs. Two such activities were marching band and yearbook. Our band was large, over 200 students, and good. We placed in state competitions and traveled out of state to perform in nationally televised parades. We had about a dozen parent volunteers to help with uniforms, moving equipment, chaperones, etc. As a senior, I was a section captain and, as such, knew most of the parent volunteers. I was also an editor of the yearbook. I helped organize the club picture day my senior year. We set up some risers on the stage, booked the photographer, and scheduled the group photos throughout the day. We got the official club rosters and sent excusal slips throughout the day inviting students to the stage to take group photos, such as debate club at 9, 45 math team at 10, 0, and so on. I was officially excused from my classes that day. I knew I would be in many photos that day. I spent extra time on my hair and makeup. Also, I wanted my fellow students to take me seriously when I was giving orders during the photo sessions, such as ejecting students whose names didn't appear on the official club roster. I wore a blazer and skirt, which I thought made me look older and gave me an air of authority. During the photographer's lunch break, I decided to go to the cafeteria and buy lunch. Due to my overfull class schedule, this was my first time buying lunch in two years. Students and faculty had two different fixed rates for lunches. At the cash register, I had my $2 in hand, which was the student lunch fee. The lunch lady looked at my blazer and makeup and said that would be $5. I protested that I was a student and shouldn't pay the faculty rate. Honey, if you were a student, I would recognize you. I didn't have more than $2 on me. I looked around frantically. Another lunch lady was walking past. She was one of the marching band parent volunteers. I asked her to vouch for me. She turned to the first lunch lady. She's a student. She doesn't work here. I paid my $2, ate my lunch, and returned to picture day. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more captivating stories. Share your own experiences, opinions in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay tuned for more epic tales.